Well, hello. Let's do another reading from Building on the Rock. This one comes again from book number 10, and it's entitled The French Soldier. The French Soldier. Henry Durant worked for the French Bible Society. He sold Bibles wherever he could. A regiment of French soldiers was stationed at a nearby army base. Henry was very concerned for the souls of many of the soldiers who were ready to be sent into battle. One day Henry visited the base and asked to see Colonel Thomas, the commanding officer. Sir, Henry said after being admitted, I know there's danger that our soldiers will shortly be sent out to fight. May I be given a pass to visit them. I wish to offer them words of encouragement and the Bibles I'm selling. You certainly may, replied the officer. I expect that we will be called into battle very soon. It would be good if the soldiers had a Bible to take with them. With this permission, Henry began to spend as much time as he could talking to the restless soldiers. As he spoke to one group about their need to be saved, he also offered to sell them each a Bible. One strong man who had listened carefully stepped forward and said, I really believe that what you say is true. I'd love to buy a Bible for myself, but I, cite, but I don't have so much as a penny to pay for it. Henry was deeply touched by the young man's interest. Why, sir, if you're sincere, then you shall certainly have a Bible. I'll pay for it myself. Henry immediately handed the soldier a Bible, but he was surprised when the soldier began to laugh at him. Ha! <laughs> it worked. I knew I could fool you. And it was very easy, too. It took a moment for Henry to recover from the shock. He had thought the soldier to be sincere. Now he saw that he was wrong. Speaking firmly, he said, Then please give the book back to me. Never, said the soldier. You gave it to me, and I plan to keep it. I can use the pages for cigarette paper. As the soldier turned away with another mocking laugh, Henry called after him, Be careful what you do with God's word. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Henry left the mocking group. He felt sad and discouraged. Returning to his room, he fell on his knees and earnestly prayed, Oh Lord, please forgive that mocking soldier and use the stolen Bible for his conversion. Only a few days later, the soldier sailed out to join in a fierce battle. But Ben, the mocking soldier, remained careless and tore page after page from his Bible. Other soldiers laughed each time, remembering how cleverly he had fooled the missionary. After sailing for several days, Ben was told that they would be joining the battle the following day. Their ship would be in the most dangerous position. This news sent a wave of fear through this young man. He began to have serious thoughts for the first time. He began to, uh, or his mind rather, flashed back to the missionary's words. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Ben couldn't sleep that night, but tossed and turned. He was filled with awful fear. He could only think of the approaching danger and a righteous God. What if, what if something happens tomorrow, and I do fall into God's hands? He shuddered at the thought. His wicked life passed before him. If only he could live his life over. As soon as the first light of dawn filtered in, Ben got his Bible from his trunk. He was almost too afraid to read it. He expected to see himself condemned on every page, but fear drove him to open the ragged Bible. The words that met his eye were a great surprise for him. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Encouraged, he turned the pages to read more. He that has the Son has life. Thoughtfully, he read further. Come unto me, all you 
who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. These words deeply impressed him, but while he was still thinking about what he had read, the call to action sounded. Ben entered into the battle together with the other soldiers on board. The fighting was heavy and many lives were lost. Suddenly, Ben was hit in the chest by a bullet. As soon as they reached land again, he was brought to the hospital, seriously wounded. For several weeks, Ben was very ill, but while the fever, fever raged, the Spirit of God was working in his heart. The more Ben saw how sinful he was, the more he realized that he needed the Savior. Only the blood of Jesus, only the blood of Jesus could wash away his sin. Ben was still very ill when he was sent back to his own home. Everyone could see that he had come home to die, but they could also see that Ben has, was a changed man. He was always reading from his tattered Bible. He was always begging his mother and friends to listen to the voice of God in his word. He tried to tell them how terrible it would be if they fall into the hands of the, of the living God. After six weeks, Ben died, but not without faith and hope. He had received grace to trust in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Henry the missionary had not forgotten the careless soldier. He had often prayed for him, begging the Lord to remember him in mercy. One day, he returned to the same town where he had met the soldiers. He saw that a funeral was taking place. That evening, Henry was in a restaurant. <coughs> Excuse me. That evening, Henry was in a restaurant for his evening meal. He noticed that something was different. The waitresses were usually noisy, smiling as they served, but now they were sad and quiet as they did their work. Henry noticed the owner bent over her work at the counter. He walked over and said, Good evening, Mrs. Pierre. When the woman looked up, he saw tears streaming down her face. What's happened that makes you so sad? Oh, sir, my dear son was buried today. He was a soldier who was sent into a battle a couple of months ago. He was seriously wounded and was brought home to die. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. Please accept my sympathy. There's no way that I can comfort you, but I have a book that's the only source of real comfort. Henry opened this Bible and said, Listen to what it says. With that, he began to read to her from a comforting chapter. As Henry continued reading, he did not see the shocked expression on Mrs. Pierre's face when she saw his Bible. After a few moments, she interrupted, Wait, I have something to show you. She hurried from the room and soon returned with Ben's shabby Bible. Look, she said, this is what my son gave me before he died. It was his most precious possession. This book looks exactly like yours. Henry took the book and wondered why it was so badly torn. Opening the cover, he saw something the soldier had written. Received from a missionary on June 25, first used for cigarette paper, but later read, believed, and used by the Lord to save my soul. Benjamin Pierre Immediately, Henry remembered the day he had spoken with the mocking soldiers. He especially remembered the soldier who had tricked him, the one for whom he had continued to pray. Those mocking words had continued to ring in his ears. Now, as Henry listened to Mrs. Pierre's story, he was astonished. His heart was lifted in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, who had heard and answered his prayer. Henry remembered the warning he had called out to the soldier. He remembered how discouraged he had often been since that time. He had felt that all his work was in vain. Now he saw that the Holy Spirit had used that final warning to the conversion of this young soldier. With a thankful heart, Henry continued his missionary labors with a renewed courage. Keep praying. 
give people God's word and keep praying. God bless.